Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, we're going to look at the surfaces tab with a specific topic in mind and that is the human skin. Before I get started, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my patrons and members. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. So I'm going to start this episode now with a caveat that what you should do is save your character presets as and make sure that you've got everything backed up and that way there's nothing that you can do when you play around with this tab that you can't just undo by closing the app and restarting and reloading because ultimately I can tell you everything you need to know in regards to this tab but the best way of learning is to simply get in here and have a play with yourself and see what the changes do and that's really the best thing you can do to learn. But anyway, let's jump into this then. So the first part of our surfaces tab is the base section. And in there, the second property is diffuse. And it's got a load of sub properties in there as well. But we'll just keep that minimized for a second. So the metallicity, obviously, if you're doing human skin, you want the metallicity to be zero. And the first property that you're going to be vaguely interested in is the base color. Now, what you should do is think about shaders as a kind of like a car paint where you've got different layers that perform different tasks. And the base color would obviously be the colored layer of that paint. And this is where the facial features such as the eyebrows, if you're not using fiber mesh eyebrows, um, the lips and any kind of facial defect, birthmarks, moles, anything like that will be hidden inside this layer. And it's just a JPEG or a PNG that's stretched over the surface. Now, if I bring up the surface selection tool, you can see the actual surface that this JPEG is going to be stretched over. And immediately, the thing that you can notice more than anything else is the fact that it's not flat. So the JPEG is going to be quite literally stretched over that surface area. So any areas that are particularly bulbous, uh, the, the details are going to be stretched out. So you have to be careful what you actually put into your texture map. And more importantly, you have to make sure that it's nice and high res. Otherwise, when it gets stretched over the character's face, it's going to look really, really odd. The diffuse roughness is it gets a bit technical at that point, but it basically is used to show how much the colors in the texture layer are going to react to light, i.e. how light or dark they're going to be. I wouldn't worry too much about that right now, but if you were making something out of a really dark material, kind of clay-like material, then that would be a property that you would use. The diffuse overlay weight is if you want to put something like eyebrows on there. So there you go, as you can see the diffuse overlay. So we've got an overlay, another layer on top of our diffuse layer. And you can see that we've got a color assigned to that. So it's just a basic color with a opacity map on it, which has created the eyebrow effect there. So we, ha we, aren't, we ha don't have them in the texture map. We have them as an overlay on top of that. So the translucency property basically allows us to mimic the effect of light passing through the object, uh, such as like when you hold your hand in front of a torch, you can see the light through it and it's changed color. It's got that kind of reddish glow. And that's essentially the effect that allows you to do. It allows light to pass through the surface and change color as it does so. So yeah, and you can obviously change the color that the light is seen through, such as by applying the translucency color texture map. So we've just applied the same texture map as the base color. And that's all we needed to do for that one. Subsurface reflectance tint is a property that we can use to fix any color shift in the skin once we've applied our translucency to it. Um, if we were to just change, let's just change our translucency color to a different property there and it's not going to do a great deal on this because of the way it's laid up. As you can see, it has darkened a little bit and we could always just drop this down so that it's sort of closer to it. And yeah, as you can see, that dramatically changes the color of the skin. So 
be careful how you use that <laughs> but it's essentially used for if you were to change the um, translucency too much it would have some really wacky effects on the color of the skin so we use the reflectance tint to fix that and there we go back to normal so that's the only section you need to be worried about in the diffuse properties and then if we come into the glossy properties you can see that we've got a whole bunch of other properties have just appeared and again we've got a glossy layered weight at the top here which you can turn up or down and if we were to yank that up you could see that not a great deal has happened here although it has applied a little bit of a sheen to the skin and it's also lightens the skin color so we'll drop that back down and then we're back to where we started and what a glossy layered weight essentially does is it just controls the glossy properties of the surface obviously generally speaking you're not going to want to change the glossy color it's going to want to reflect the entire spectrum of light and not a specific color uh, particularly on skin share glossy inputs property simply allows you to use backscattering or refraction weight um, so that if you want to use those properties you can turn that on or off the glossy reflectivity is essentially how glossy the skin actually is so if we had the glossy layered weight up and we could change the glossy reflectivity we can just bring that up and as you can see it starts to give the skin a kind of a wet look property uh, again because we don't really want the skin to be glossy it doesn't really matter what value we have in there because the glossy layered weight is set to zero this isn't going to change anything on our surface glossy roughness is a property that kind of scatters the light as it reflects off the surface and essentially the higher you have it the less shine that you're going to get on the skin so if you wanted the character's skin to have a little bit of a soft reflection as though they've got slightly oily skin then you could have this set fairly high and you will notice that our character again because she's got glossy layered weight to set to zero we've got no glossy properties on this but if we were to bring that up and if we were to bring that down you could notice that the skin gets suddenly an awful lot wetter looking um so yeah this is a quite a powerful slider if you're using glossy if we set it back to 0.77 you can see that the skin uh, the uh, shine has dramatically reduced and then if we bring that back down to zero again as you can see it has disappeared glossy anisotropy is another property that we're not really going to use on skin this is more for kind of hard rough surfaces like metal and things like that so we're not really going to touch that in this tutorial there's no need to really use it Backscattering is a property that you could maybe want to use. It really depends on your preferences and what other settings you've got. Again, the best thing to do is just really get in there and experiment with this because you can use different combinations of, uh, of properties to get the same effect. This is just, the backscattering weight is going to be used to apply a kind of a sheen to your surfaces if you're doing something like silk or satin or velvet or something like that you can give you a bit of a sheen on that and again the backscattering roughness is essentially the same when that appears if you're using the uh, scatter and transmit you'll get extra properties appearing in there refraction index you're not going to want to change that really refraction is when you're sending light through a surface rather than onto it so if you're doing glass or you're creating a fog cube or something like that that's going to be where you set up the refraction for that surface in there. So the last thing that we're going to be looking at in this particular video is the bump map. And this is where we can apply the actual bumps and the little bits and pieces, the tiny details that come into our our, to our surface and this is where this file should be much bigger than your texture map because you want every little minuscule detail to be included in your normal map or your bump map realistically you're probably just going to be using a normal map in this day and age and what that does is it basically controls which way which direction the light bounces off the surface when it hits the surface thus giving you the effect of the surface being rough or smooth or having minuscule detail in it and this is the layer where details like the pores and little abnormalities in the skin are going to appear and this is a very powerful layer this is really what's going to make your skin look realistic or otherwise 
Um, a lot of people confuse details that are included in the normal map as being geometric detail because of the way that it's it reacts to the light. But more often than not, you're going to find that those tiny little details are included inside the normal map and they're not part of the object's geometry. That studio in a non-HD character will work at one or two maybe subdivisions and then an HD character only works when you get to four subdivisions but four subdivisions on a Genesis 8 character is not that high if we were to jump into our wire texture shaded mode you can see that there's not that much geometry there certainly not enough to do really really fine detailing so that's why we use a normal map to apply those details to our character the rest of these properties don't really get used when it comes to skin. Geometry just allows you to change how how much tiling happens with the UVs and whether or not the object's opaque so we can drop the opacity down and then we get a freakish horror picture which we don't like. The emission again unless you're creating a, a recreation of the movie Cocoon you don't need to make the characters uh, skin surfaces glow. Volume you don't need to worry about again. This is more for as I said if you're creating things like fog cubes and things like that and top coat You could apply a top coat if you really needed to which you could use to create things like tattoos and such But again, it's not really essential to creating a good skin shader and then metallic flakes again Unless you're creating a robot you don't need to apply metallic flakes to your character Ultimately the things that you really want to worry about is your diffuse your glossy, your backscattering and your translucency and your bump maps. And they're the things that are really going to make your character stand out. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. A little explanation of the surfaces tab specific to skin. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks very much, guys. Bye bye.